Well, again, welcome so much to our Highway 37 Town Hall. This is an annual event. Uh, we are so appreciative that you have joined us tonight. My name is Mike McGuire, honored to represent the state Senate from the Golden Gate Bridge to the Oregon border. Tonight, we are in 100% partnership with Senator Dodd, Supervisor Arnold from Marin County, and Supervisor Rabbit. Uh, and together, we're bringing transportation agency leaders from four North Bay counties here to the town hall, along with the Metropolitan Transportation Commission who oversees transportation projects across the Bay Area. And we also have the Bay Area Caltrans District Director to talk about the Highway 37 improvement projects. Now, there is a lot happening on this 21 mile state highway stretch. Four ma major improvement projects all in different stages uh, are taking place even as we speak. And that's what we wanna do is break down each of these improvement projects for you on this one major stretch of State Highway. Uh, as Senator Dodd and I have been saying for quite some time, uh, Highway 37 is that canary in the coal mine on sea level rise. It's the most threatened state highway in the entire state system when it comes to sea level rise and sea inundation. The highway is also over capacity with mind numbing morning and evening commutes holding approximately 50,000 cars every day traveling east to west and then doing it all over again in the evening. The good news is this. The good news is that help is on the way. State and local leaders are working together like never before mobilizing to be able to create a safer, more reliable Highway 37. Now there's a lot going on for the future of this corridor, and we're here to explain what exactly is happening, what the goals and timelines are, and most importantly, we wanna get your input tonight. There are four main improvement projects on this stretch of corridor. Number one, and we're grateful, Caltrans has moved quickly to complete a project focused on the flooding of Highway 37 between Highway 101 and Black Point. You're gonna hear more from the new district director from Caltrans District 4 in just a few moments about how they've raised portions of the pavement and put in a portable pumps and uh, brought in an inflatable rubber dam to help protect the roadway during storm events. The second project that will be discussed tonight is a permanent fix a permanent fix to portions of Highway 37 between Highway 101 and Sears Point at the raceway. An environmental impact report and engineering study uh, will be completed in 2022 that will identify how to permanently lift portions of this stretch of 37 out of the marshlands and the flood zone. Again, you'll hear more about that in just a few moments. The third project that we'd like to cover with you is implementing a movable barrier between the raceway and Vallejo that will allow for two lanes in the morning going west and two lanes in the evening going east. Similar to what we see right now on the Golden Gate Bridge. And the fourth and largest project we're gonna hear more about is the long-term work that uh, Caltrans, Metropolitan Transportation Commission, Senator Bill Dodd has planned for Highway 37, permanently lifting the corridor out of the marsh between Raceway, the Sonoma Raceway and the city of Vallejo. Tonight, you're gonna to have one heck of a presentation covering all of the ongoing projects. And again, most importantly, letting you know exactly how you can participate in the timeline for each. We've, uh, Senator Dodd and I have been receiving dozens of questions coming into tonight. Again, if you'd like to participate in tonight's town hall, that's the most important part, please email Senator Dodd and myself, stateroute37 at DOT, Dot ca .gov. Again, email your questions and comments now. State Route 37 at dot.ca.gov. We'll be answering them here in just a few moments. But now I'd like to be able to introduce Senator Bill Dodd. We have been attached at the hip on this project. He has been a leader when it comes to transportation in the North Bay area. He's going to give us some additional detail on tonight's town hall and on the conversation that's ahead. Senator Dodd, thank you so much for your partnership. Uh, this would not be happening without you, and we're grateful to work with you in the state Senate. Senator Dodd, you're on mute. You'd think by now we'd have that down. Senator McGuire, thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity once again to work with you on this incredibly important project. I want to thank all the participants for calling in or tuning in tonight to uh, you know, participate in, in what is an incredibly 
important state highway uh, in the North Bay, no doubt about it. I also want to thank our partners in this. Uh, Supervisors Judy Arnold and David, Supervisor David Rabbit are here. All their staffs are here. This is a partnership with all four counties, uh, Sonoma, Marin, Solano, and Napa counties. Really important that we could continue that. And then we have the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, Caltrans, and several nonprofits involved in the future of Highway 37. Having that many interests involved, I think, is a sign of how important this corridor is to our entire region, but also to our entire state. Uh, our motto is one corridor, one team. Now we'll hear, no, I mean, before we hear from uh, County Supervisor Judy Arnold, I kind of wanted to go into a, a couple other points. You know, Highway 37, if you've driven that, is incredibly beautiful and it's a unique place that has many long-term challenges. But solutions to those challenges can provide a model for the rest of the state and the nation. The studies of Highway 37 started with traffic congestion analysis, analysis, but now have expanded to sea level rise in transit. An estimated 40,000 cars and trucks cross it each day. That number is expected to increase by nearly 50%. And that would be up to 58,000 vehicles you know, per, per day. And, um, and over the next, that would be over the next 20 years. GPS data from mobile phones show that approximately half of the daily users of Highway 37 originate from Solano County and uh, approximately 25% come from the city of Vallejo alone. This isn't a mystery. There's cheaper housing in Solano and better paying jobs in Marin and Sonoma. This is why building more houses closer to higher paying jobs is a key part of transportation planning. Even if commute patterns change in a post COVID economy, this is the only major evacuation route in the North Bay if the Richmond Bridge is ever rendered unsafe. We've got to remember that. That's really incredibly important for our workforce. A 2015 study done by the Road Ecology Center at UC Davis originally showed major flooding and degradation of surrounding wetlands from sea level rise would not happen until around the year 2025. Those effects appeared instead in 2017 for the first time when the western portion of Highway 37 was flooded for three weeks. This will only get worse, and Senator McGuire will expand on how that, that's being addressed a little bit later. As flooding happens more, it further degrades the plants and the soil from, uh, from eroding. More flooding equals more erosion. Uh, we, sh we all need, we know that we need public transit along this corridor because right now there is literally None. We need to add a third lane to allow bus or shuttle service. Aligning the smart train with the future causeway is another possibility. Getting the train to connect to a rail line in Napa and ultimately the national Amtrak system is within our reach. We can't keep delaying the solutions because it's expensive or difficult to build. Those things only get harder and longer I ran for the legislature to fix problems exactly like this and leave them and not leave them for my kids and grandkids to solve. We owe it to future generations to get this project solved now. So with that, it's my great pleasure to announce, uh, to introduce right now, Marin County Supervisor, Judy Arnold. Thank you very much, Senator Dodd and Senator McGuire for hosting the meeting this evening. And thanks to your leadership, as well as that of Caltrans and MTC, I appreciate the short-term fixes we have seen on S on 37, including the reduction of storm-related flooding at, that we were seeing in my district on the Marin side of the corridor. But I know our work isn't done yet. State Route 37 is a unique corridor with many opportunities for improvements including sea level rise protections, environmental restoration, and multimodal transportation improvements for both commuting and recreation. I look forward to continuing these discussions 
as well as our collaboration with all the counties that share this corridor, the different agencies we have here tonight, and of course the public. Thank you for joining us. I look forward to hearing your input to help shape the corridor's future. And I'm delighted now to introduce the County uh, Supervisor from Sonoma, David Rabbit. Thank you very much, Supervisor Arnold. I appreciate that. <clears throat> I just wanna say thank you to our two state senators, champions of this project and so many more. And to my colleague uh, from Marin, Judy Arnold, uh, the four counties involved in this project all along uh, Marin, Sonoma, Napa, Solano, and certainly our partners at MTC and Caltrans. You know, um, this corridor, as we all know, is so vitally important. In fact, it's the northernmost non-mountainous east-west link uh, between US 101 and really I-80 and I-5 beyond. Uh, we have an opportunity here to not only construct a more resilient multimodal corridor, that can not just mitigate environmental impacts as is the norm, but to really incorporate those environmental enhancements in the project, relieving congestion, accommodating and adapting sea level rise, allowing for wetland restoration, providing for public access, all while improving safety and undoubtedly improving the quality of life for thousands who rely on the corridor. I'm really grateful that we have so many projects underway and I know we're gonna talk about those tonight along the 21 mile corridor and really working with our partners for solutions for the near term, solutions that are gonna take a little bit longer and solutions that are going to be for the long term. And I think it's uh, is really important. Uh, this project continue to move forward. Grateful for the partnerships that we've had to date. And to that, I'm gonna turn it back to Senator Dodd. Well, thank you very much. So we've got a great uh, panel tonight to uh, share their views on this very, very important project and answer some incredibly important questions that you may have. The first panelist is Dina El Tawanzi, uh, District Four Director from Caltrans here in the Bay Area. Uh, Andy Vermeer, Deputy Executive Director of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Ann Richmond, Executive Director, the Transportation Authority of Marin. Suzanne Smith, Executive Director of Sonoma County Transportation Authority. Daryl Hall is Executive Director of the Solano Transportation Authority, and Kate Miller, Executive Director of the Napa Valley Transportation Authority. And now the first thing we're gonna do here is queue up a video of the Highway 37 US 101 to Interstate 80. Uh, incredible video, enjoy. Highway 37 is a critical piece of the Bay Area mobility puzzle. The 21-mile quarter connects Solano County cities and some of the most affordable housing in the Bay Area with jobs in Napa, Marin, and Sonoma counties. Yet, the route is challenged by the issues of congestion, flooding, and sea level rise, as well as limited access for bikes or pedestrians. Even during the COVID-19 pandemic, traffic flow on Highway 37 is routinely pinched by a 10-mile bottleneck. This stretch in particular, from Sears Point to Mare Island, one lane in each direction, separated by a concrete barrier, means westbound traffic backs up in the morning, adding up to 30 minutes to the typical commute and impacting Vallejo streets as drivers divert through Mare Island. In the evening, eastbound traffic backs up from Sears Point to beyond Lakeville Highway, adding as much as an hour and 20 minutes to commute times for some drivers and extra safety problems for drivers who have diverted onto Lakeville Highway. There is no easy alternative to Highway 37. As you can see in these two existing options, drivers forced to detour north or south would have to travel twice as far to get from Vallejo to Nevada or vice versa. A commitment to equity requires a reliable link between the comparatively affordable housing in Solano County and job markets to the west. And Highway 37 can be a viable route for future transit service only if buses can avoid congestion. The situation can be even worse in the winter. Existing levees protect the low-lying highway from everyday flooding. But heavy rains and king tides can shut down the entire highway has happened for 28 days in 2017 and for eight days in 2019 due to flooding at the Novato Creek crossing. Rising sea levels will require a permanent long-term solution. That's why Caltrans, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, 
and the transportation authorities in Marin, Sonoma, Napa, and Solano counties have formed a single team to team with you to develop workable ideas and design a modern, resilient Highway 37 that's higher, safer, greener, and built to last. All options are being considered, including the existing alignment, a new bridge across San Pablo Bay, or an inland retreat. What comes to mind when you reimagine Highway 37? Is reducing congestion a priority? In addition to providing transportation for cars and trucks, how should Highway 37 accommodate bikes, pedestrians, buses, and maybe even trains? What about conserving wetlands and wildlife or greater public access to broaden opportunities for all to enjoy the natural resources that flank the highway? It will take years and probably billions of dollars that are not yet available to make this vision a reality. But the Highway 37 team already is working on short and intermediate term improvements to ease congestion and reduce flooding risk. On the Marin County end of the quarter, crews already have raised the pavement elevation, built concrete flood walls along critical segments of Novato Creek, installed new drainage systems, culverts, and slide gates, and acquired inflatable rubber bladders and portable pumps for deployment before major storms. Work set to begin soon includes more paving and repair work, mowing and weed abatement. The Highway 37 team is also looking at options for reducing congestion in the 10-mile bottleneck between Sears Point and Mare Island. These include a three-lane highway with movable median barriers for a carpool lane that operates westbound in the morning and eastbound in the evening. And using the current shoulders for either part-time or full-time carpool lanes in each direction. It would take about four years and cost 250 to 400 million dollars. Challenges include avoiding impacts on sensitive wetlands and minimizing the use of any bay fill. The other big issue, of course, is money for both the interim congestion relief alternatives and a long-term project to completely transform Highway 37, tolls may be a practical solution that can serve as a match to secure other regional, state, and federal dollars. What do you think are the right solutions for the Highway 37 puzzle? We look forward to hearing from you as we discuss the past, the present, and especially the future of Highway 37. One quarter, one team many solutions. We're glad you are part of the team and we welcome your ideas for solutions along Highway 37 and in the San Pablo Baylands. All right, Dina, why don't you take it away? Uh, Dina is going to be talking uh, about the shorter term uh, projects. District 4, District Director, good evening. Good evening. May I have the slide deck up, please? Rich, we're going to need to be able to get the slide deck up uh, for uh, Madam Director. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. Good evening, everyone. Uh, can I get the next slide, please? Good evening, everyone. I'm Dina Alfonsi, the director of, uh, for Caltrans here in the Bay Area. Caltrans owns and operates State Route 37. We are the environmental lead agency for NEPA and CEQA processes. Next slide, please. We're working closely with our partners at MTC, TAM, SCTA, NVTA, STA, and to address the issues and to envision the future of State Route 37. For this portion of the meeting, I will present the short-term solutions we've been working on to keep traffic flowing on State Route 37 and address some of the flooding issues while my colleagues, uh, Andy Framier from MTC and Ann Richmond from TAM will talk about the long-term solutions and where you can provide input, as well as our next steps. Next slide, please. As you saw in the video, State Route 37 is a 21 mile long inter-regional route uh, located along the north shore, northern shore of San Pablo Bay with ecologically rich baylands uh, biological and cultural resources, and it's also considered part of the Pacific Flyway for migratory birds. State Route 37 is a direct link for commuters, freight, and recreational traffic between US 101 and Interstate 80. When we think of State Route 37, we think of it in three distinct portions. The first one is the western portion, which you see here uh, marked in purple on the map. 
Uh, this is a four lane expressway portion and it's from US 101 to Highway 121. And then the middle uh, portion, which is shown in blue, is a two lane conventional highway from Highway 121 to Mare Island. And then finally, the eastern portion, which is shown in green, um, is a four lane freeway portion from Mare Island to Interstate 80. Without this key transportation link in place, uh, traffic detours are over 40 miles long to the north and to the south. Next slide, please. Uh, State Route 37 has been subjected to a lot of flooding during winter, rains, and high tide events, causing delays and closures, most recently in 2017 and 2019. In 2017, the department executed emergency contracts, uh, which we call director's orders, amounting to roughly $8 billion. We raised 1,500 feet of pavement, constructed 1,500 feet of concrete barrier flood wall along eastbound shoulder, added drainage improvement, and also restored levees in two locations within the state right-of-way. In 2019, we added additional director's orders in the amount of roughly $5 million to construct a temporary concrete and soil dam to pump water off the roadway. We raised 3,500 feet of west, uh, westbound pavement up to one foot east of the Navarro Creek uh, Bridge and paved low spots east of the creek. We also installed additional drainage improvements. Our maintenance crew is ready to install temporary flood wall, uh, what we call a uh, rubber bladder on eastbound 37 at the Marsh Road on ramp. And we're also ready to deploy tractor based pumps whenever needed. Next slide. please. In addition to the emergency work in the maintenance preparations, there are two interim projects that are on their way. First is a flood reduction project. Together, uh, through funding identification by Senator McGuire, we are planning for further flood control, uh, for flood reduction improvements between 101 and Sears Point at Highway 121. We will include risk assessment for the interim project, and evaluating the probability of raised highway or levees over the interim project lifespan. We're currently finalizing the risk assessment for this project, and we are preparing to hold a public a scoping meeting in August of this year. We're anticipating the completion of the environmental phase by early 2023. Next slide, please. The second project is an interim traffic relief congestion project, which aims to improve traffic flow and peak travel times and increase vehicle occupancy between Mare Island and State Route 121. The capacity decrease from four lanes to two lanes results in peak period uh, traffic delays and backups that occur in both directions during commute periods, as well as during weekends, holidays, and special events. There is also no bus service available on this corridor, as, as was pointed out earlier, and it's infeasible for transit operators to implement reliable services due to the severe traffic congestion. Currently, this project is considering three alternatives. The first alternative is a three-lane facility with movable barrier to provide a contra flow uh, HOV lane in the peak direction of traffic. Um, can you go back, please? Uh, in the peak direction of traffic. Um, and so that would be two lanes in the westbound direction in the morning and uh, two lanes in the um, eastbound direction in the afternoon. Uh, you'll find a similar operation on the Golden Gate Bridge. This alternative does require a pretty substantial storage space and financial investment in ongoing operations and maintenance. The second alternative being considered is um, to convert the outside shoulder to part-time uh, use HOV lane, which will be operational during peak hours, similar to the Richmond San Rafael Bridge eastbound. During the off-peak hours, the shoulder will, will be closed for traffic. And the third alternative is a four-lane highway with HOV lanes. The additional lanes will be uh, will be designed for high occupancy vehicles only during peak periods and will be open to general purpose traffic during the off peak periods. If you um, notice, all three alternatives have a common theme that is, the additional lane will be designed as an HOV lane, which is critical to incentivize the use of carpools and for transit operators to start implementing bus services. This project is currently in the environmental review process. We anticipate releasing the draft environmental document for public comments later this year, 
with the intent to complete the final EIR in mid-2022. Depending on the availability of funding, construction of this project could be completed by 2024 and open to the public as early as 2025. Next slide, please. As we look forward, uh, on May 26, Caltrans will be hosting a public outreach meeting specifically on the new planning and environmental linkage process, uh, or what we call PEL. This is the first time Caltrans is using this process that will allow us to build consensus with the public and our partners and develop material that, are, that is going to be carried into the NEPA and the CEQA phases of the project without really any throwaways. The PEL will also provide us a greater uh, schedule and budget clarity, and we're really looking, uh, we're really looking forward to discussing it uh, more with you on May 26. Uh, and now I'd like to hand it over to Andy from here with MTC to discuss our look towards the possibilities of the future. Andy? And thank you, Director El Tuanze, uh, and greetings to everybody that's participating on social media. Welcome. Um, as Dina mentioned, the planning and environmental linkages process is an important part of setting the long-term planning for resilient Highway 37 uh, for the foreseeable future. In time, there's going to be several issues that need to be addressed in order for Highway 37 to be a functioning transportation route for the North Bay Area. Next slide. The ultimate highway um, has to address a number of issues, and I'm going to go through them uh, one by one. Uh, next slide, please. The first is flood protection. Uh, I think we all recognize that we have had continual problems with flooding, and we do anticipate that projected sea level rise will create more problems in the future. Uh, and so we want to avoid the flooding in the vicinity of 37. Next slide. The surrounding sensitive wetlands and marsh habitat uh, support many protected species. There's a strong interest in preserving and enhancing the wetland habitat. And additionally, these wetlands help to dissipate the sea level and reduce adjacent uh, property impacts that can occur from the wave momentum and erosion that caused uh, by it. Next. We also know that to facilitate a strong economy, we cannot continue to build larger and larger roadways. We need to provide viable options for moving people to accommodate the travel needs. Transit, uh, transit options, which has been, has been mentioned, do not exist in this corridor, really need to function um, for this large transportation corridor to uh, really support the economy. Next slide. MTC and Caltrans are dedicated to making walking and bicycling a reality in this corridor, and it will be a long-term challenge for us to invest in. Next slide. We need to maintain existing access. Highway 37 needs to consider long-term connection points that our infrastructure requires as well as the existing recreational and private property access that exists today. Next slide. This area is rich with educational and recreational opportunities. We're asking you to look into the future and to let us know what you see. Next slide. So we've listed a few issues and opportunities that this corridor planning effort should address. But this mind map illustrates that there are others. We want to know what you all feel is important for us to focus on and to address. Next slide. To address the long-term challenges, MTC, Caltrans, and the four counties are collaborating to develop site-specific and corridor-wide solutions. These studies need your input. Um, Currently, the ultimate sea level rise uh, resilient design alternatives analysis, that's quite a mouthful, is working with stakeholders within the 101 to Sears Point area on the unique issues that facing the Marin and Sonoma along 37. Next slide. A previous design alternative analysis looked into options about how to balance congestion and the sensitive environment between Sears Point and Mare Island. It was the focus of the first part of our conversation. 
At the same time, the multimodal corridor plan is developing a broad list of projects and strategies to include the entire corridor from 101 in Marin to 80 in Solano counties. The findings of these studies will be integrated into the development of the long-term range of alternatives that will be explored uh, further with the public and environmental link, uh, I'm sorry, uh, environmental regulatory agencies through what is referred to as the planning and environmental linkages process that allow for early review and screening before the Caltrans begins the environmental clearance process. Each of these studies and planning processes will benefit from obtaining public input now. While it will not be the only time that the agencies will seek your input, at this point in the stage of the project development, its project need and purpose really needs to understand what the range of solutions are. Next slide. So as part of the preliminary studies, we've identified the following list of preliminary project purpose, purpose statements, but we are within the beginning stages of refining our project needs and purpose. So what are your thoughts on the objectives and the intent of the future of State Route 37? It is likely that our future plans need to explore whether Highway 37 is in the best location. The corridor is broad and serves a wide area of the North Bay. As we noted earlier, the current location crosses through a vast array of sensitive wetlands. Next slide. Some have asked whether a more direct route crossing over the San Pablo Bay might be more efficient. So we're gonna consider an overwater alignment. Next slide. Or perhaps there's a new route that can serve the same area, but avoid wetland marshes. Our question to you all is what do you think? I believe at this point, uh, I'm gonna hand it off to uh, Ann Richmond, the director of the Transportation Authority of Marin. Thank you very much, Mr. Vermeer, and good evening to everyone who's watching. Thank you for being here tonight. So I'll be reviewing, I'm Ann Richmond, the Executive Director of the Transportation Authority of Marin, and I'll be reviewing some of the ways that you, the public, can continue to provide input and participate in the processes that you've just been hearing about as we work to develop near-term and long-term improvements in the Highway 37 corridor. As we develop alternatives, we'll, we will consider how they will affect our communities, our environment, and of course, the users of Highway 37. There are many considerations, some are shown on this slide. Which ones are important to you? Protecting and enhancing natural resources, minimizing impacts on existing uses, providing mobility options, managing costs, and addressing user needs. Next slide, please. We also have many questions for you. To help gather input, our project team has developed a questionnaire that anyone can fill out and share your thoughts, concerns, and expectations for the highway. Here are some examples of the information that we would like to gather from you. What's the most important issue to you? Is it flooding, congestion, providing a critical link? Where should the ultimate Highway 37 be? What does a long-term highway look like in 50 years? What about in 100 years? What safety issues concern you? Where should access be preserved or added? The survey link shown on the slide here, resilient37.org slash questionnaire is available now. Please add your responses to those we have already received. Next slide, please. We know that you all have many questions for us as well. And we want to show you that we are still early in the process but that there will be many opportunities in the future to provide input and let us know your thoughts on the corridor. Next slide, please. This will lay out an approximation of the steps that we're taking to develop this long-term vision for Highway 37. As you've heard from the previous presenters, we've been studying focused areas along the highway from US 101 to Sears Point and from Sears Point to Mare Island and some focused improvements from Mare Island to I-80. We're seeking input on those efforts now and throughout the next year. 
Next slide, please. As mentioned, the design alternatives assessment are a major and early input into the corridor-wide planning effort. Additionally, the comprehensive multimodal corridor plan, another mouthful, is developing short, middle, and long-term project lists and travel approaches that can be implemented over time. Finally, the planning and environmental linkages study will be evaluating the array of alternatives to address the long-term solutions. Together with regulatory agencies, stakeholders, and the public, the Pell will narrow the range of alternatives, and we will be seeking public input throughout all of these processes. Next slide, please. The identified alternatives from the Pell work will then be advanced for more detailed evaluations consistent with regulatory requirements to address potential impacts and to minimize the harm or if needed to develop mitigation measures. This is another opportunity for public input. And finally, we would determine a project that can seek funding for final design and construction. Next slide, please. So in addition to attending tonight's town hall meeting, there are many opportunities to provide input even in the near term. We, will, we are planning to host an additional public meeting on May 26th and another meeting in August. We are seeking input via the questionnaire that I mentioned earlier. You can also feel free to provide comments via email at the email address shown here, stateroute37 at dot.ca.gov or to leave a message on the phone line. Much of the information found today can be found at the Resilient 37 website, resilient37.org. Finally, we have an interactive map that is available for the public to leave comments on as well. Next slide, please. There's a quick example of how this interactive map works. Let's see if the quick example is going to work for us here this evening. <laughs> There we go. So once you're once you're on this map page, which you can get to from the resilient37.org website, you can click through to turn layers on and off to leave comments about specific areas or for the whole corridor. And importantly, you can see comments that others have posted as well. This is really just another way for you to engage with the project and to leave questions and information for the project team. So that concludes the formal presentation, and now it's time to hear from you. Thank you again to Senators McGuire and Dodd for providing this opportunity. We look forward to receiving public input. Senator McGuire, back to you. Ms. Richmond, thank you so much. That's uh, Ann Richmond, Executive Director of the Transportation Authority Marin. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is our annual town hall focused on the improvement projects, four different projects, one highway, Highway 37. You just heard uh, about the improvement project that's been completed to help build resiliency for flooding uh, between Highway 101 and Black Point. You just heard uh, about a permanent fix that will be coming to the Marin section of Highway 37 and the environmental study that's currently underway to be able to raise portions of that long term get it out of the marshland. You just heard about a third project that's being focused in on, a movable barrier project to open up two lanes during commute time, very similar to what we see on the Golden Gate Bridge. And you just heard about the fourth and largest portion of the four improvement projects, and that's getting Highway 37 out of the marshland between uh, Sonoma Raceway and the city of Vallejo. All right. It's time for your questions. Uh, Senator Dodd and I have been receiving literally dozens of questions from each and every one of you. If you'd like to be able to ask a question, make a comment tonight, hit us up at stateroute37 at dot.ca.gov. Email your questions, your comments, your concerns, stateroute37 at dot.ca.gov. The way this is going to work, uh, we do have questions have been submitted. Senator Dodd and I will be uh, tag teaming this portion, asking questions that have been coming in. And of course, we'll be hearing from Supervisor Arnold and Supervisor Rabbit uh, as well, along with each of the executive directors from the regional transportation agencies the Metropolitan Transportation Agency, and of course, our district director from the Bay Area Caltrans District. All right, so Senator Dodd, why don't we get right into it right now? We are getting a lot of questions that have been coming in tonight uh, about rail and public transit. So Maria, Carl, Ruth, Lisa have all written in uh, saying, will there be an eastern spur of the smart train 
from Novato to either Fairfield, Shellville, Napa, or Vallejo. So why don't we go to uh, Suzanne Smith from the Sonoma County Transportation Agency uh, to be able to comment on that? Because Ms. Smith, this has been uh, a lot. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about this, and yes, we are focused on providing a public transit option. Uh, Ms. Smith, I think you've said to yourself, this is a public transit desert. Please, Ms. Smith, take it away. Thank you, Senator. Yes, that is a critical component for this east-west connection. Right now, you literally have zero options when it comes to transit to get uh, from Vallejo, Solano County, over to Marin, Sonoma. And we are looking at a couple of things. We've uh, been working with SMART on some initial analysis uh, as to whether or not we could use the existing rail line. There is actually a rail line that uh, connects east to west. Um, we also are, have done some analysis on bus transit. Uh, Kate Miller, who runs transit over in Napa Valley, uh, was in, in, she managed a, a consultant report that uh, showed why the, how the need for transit uh, is really clear for folks who are trying to get to work every day and have no options. So uh, whether it's rail or bus, we need to uh, advance not only the, the roadway component so we can put people on buses in carpool lanes, but we also need to, to continue the work with SMART on that east-west connection. That's Suzanne Smith from the Sonoma County Transportation Authority. Senator Dodd and I have also been able to work with uh, the California Transportation Commission to be able to secure a grant that will help study uh, the SMART potential expansion going east. Uh, don't have any firm news yet, but this study will be integral to look at the long-term success on that. Uh, I'm going to ask one additional question and then turn it over to Senator Dodd to take it away. Uh, Barry Toronto uh, writes in tonight, uh, and we're going to go to uh, our District 4 Director from Caltrans, Dina L. Tawanzi. Barry asks, how will the contractor whether it's on the Marin side of the project or between Sonoma Raceway and Vallejo, how will the contractor use proper notifications and signage to inform motorists of the construction schedule and potential lane closures? Madam District Director from Caltrans. Thank you, Senator. Uh, great question. Our plan always with Caltrans project is to do as much outreach as possible with all the parties that are involved. So a contractor would definitely know where uh, such proper signs would be would, would be placed. But in general, what we would do is put the uh, outreach out with all our partners and work with our partners on how we are going to uh, stage the projects uh, during the construction phase and ensure that everybody's getting uh, uh, heard and that we are actually addressing all the concerns. So. Generally speaking, the contractor would know before even hitting the construction because we do put uh, construction uh, staging plans. We have uh, a full development of a set of plans that goes out as part of our bidding process. Uh, I hope that answers the question. I'll be happy to elaborate more. Thank you so much, Dina. Dina Altuanzi up from Caltrans. Let's turn it over to Senator Dodd for additional questions. Yeah, from Alejandro Moreno, uh, why hasn't an overpass been built where 37 meets in Fenion Raceway. Those lights cost massive backups both in both directions. 37 should bypass right over the top of that intersection. Given the wetlands along 37, how about take that same bypass, turn it into a Richmond Bridge style double deck, two lanes solution each way, upper deck eastbound, lower deck westbound. I've had to make frequent San Rafael Vallejo trips lately, coincidentally, and what a nightmare. Daryl, can you uh, address that, please? Daryl Holtz from Slaughter County. I think you're going to want to have James do that from Sonoma. Okay. Or Suzanne. Sure. Uh, so we are working on a project there in partnership with Caltrans on uh, improving that, that uh, intersection. The work is in the environmental stage right now. Uh, and you're absolutely right. Uh, the, the person who wrote that question in there, it's the number one uh, area of concern. Obviously, when flooding happens, that's a priority. But in terms of long term uh, fixes for the corridor, that's the number one priority because of the significant traffic congestion we get from that uh, from that traffic signal. 
And then a question uh, from Laureen uh, Theveny, will there be a safety medium median in the new design? Dina, can you address that? Uh, yes, so thank you, Senator. Uh, the new design is not finalized yet, but uh, we our biggest priority is safety in Caltrans. So definitely uh, looking at safety consideration would be part of the final design. It's something that we're working here with our partners to maximize the design for all safety features possible and to ensure that all modes of travel, uh, regardless of which mode you choose to, uh, to use, uh, is going to be safe and reliable for you. Thank you. Go ahead, Senator McGuire. Thank you so much, Senator Dodd. All right, let's get into a question that's come in from Joseph. Focus on the median mover. All right, so one of the projects that the Metropolitan Transportation Commission is working with each of the regional transportation agencies and Caltrans is bringing that same median mover that you see on the Golden Gate Bridge to Highway 37. So Joseph writes in, wants an update on that, and when we could expect to see that implemented, taking out that permanent cement barrier that's there now, making that into a third lane, uh, and then doing two lane going west in the morning, two lanes going east in the evening. Let's go to Andrew Premier to give us a timeline on when we could expect to see that uh, barrier mover in process, uh, in, uh, in place. Thank you, Senator McGuire, and thank you for the question. Um, in the original, in the beginning part of our presentation, we showed several sections that are currently being evaluated in the environmental document for the congestion relief project. We anticipate that that environmental work, which will determine what is the proper solution out of those three choices, should be complete um, in the next summer. And at that point in time, we will have a defined alternative. And if one of the selected, if the selected of alternative uh, uses a movable barrier, um, then it will uh, be constructed as part of that project. I will say though that all three options that we present have about the same amount of construction time, but the features associated with the movable barrier make sense in some respects. They do create a long-term operational and maintenance obligation. And so as you've watched the Golden Gate Bridge work being done, they move that barrier every day, but that comes at a cost. Uh, for the Richmond Centerfell Bridge, on the upper deck where we have a bike and pedestrian path, we use a movable barrier on a regular basis to maintain uh, the, the third lane and to be providing safe access for both workers and the public. Again, it's an ongoing operations and maintenance cost, and that needs to be weighed against the investment in the infrastructure. So I would encourage folks to participate in the current environmental work that's being finalized this year and comment on the various solutions. Um, and if that option turns out to be the most viable, then we'll build it on the same time frame that was discussed by the director of Caltrans in the first part of the meeting. And Andrew, I just wanna understand it's being evaluated. So let's just say in 2022, uh, this is a preferred alternative. We would consider this interim, right? Uh, uh, reason being is, we at least get some relief until a permanent project could be built on marshland. You wanna clarify that, Andrew? Yeah, no, that is correct, Senator. Thank you very much. Um, you know, what we're focusing on in the near term is the flooding problems that we're having on the Marin side and the congestion problems that we're having on the Sonoma side. And so our work in the congestion relief project is really designed to get us through the time period it will take us to make 37 in its ultimate condition uh, much more resistant to sea level rise. And so that project, which is a long time coming and requires a lot of additional funding, uh, we all felt it was important to really focus on the first and near term problems of which the barrier removal remove or the barrier option uh, is an early near term solution, but does not protect us from the eventual sea level rise concerns. 100%, I'm gonna do additional question and turn it back over to Senator Dodd. Uh, we're gonna go back to Suzanne Smith. Suzanne, uh, she is the executive director of the Sonoma County Transportation Authority. A lot of interest uh, in the Highway 37, 121 intersection. So we are being inundated with questions tonight uh, on this intersection. So let's just go over it one more time, Ms. Smith. So you're in the environmental stage. 
Uh, and would you expect, uh, just go through the potential alternatives. It could be a flyover, meaning building an overpass that would connect uh, to uh, Highway 37 in general. It could be taking out the lights. Just go through the alternatives that you're studying right now. Okay. I'm actually going to hand it over to James Cameron, who is deep in the weeds on this and can give that quick overview, but also if you have follow on questions, he can provide that. That's great. James Cameron is the deputy director for the Snow County Transportation Authority. Mr. Cameron, the floor is yours. Absolutely. So with regard to that intersection, uh, there will be an intersection control evaluation that addresses what we can do in the near term for the environmental document that's moving forward. It will be either a continuous T or potentially a roundabout. A continuous T would allow for that eastbound flow of traffic to move through the intersection without having to stop at the signal light. And then the project which uh, uh, Executive Director Vermeer uh, described uh, adding the carpool lane all the way to Mare Island would allow for that, that flow of traffic smoothly and continuously through the intersection. Thank you so much. So Mr. Cameron, the last question on this, and it's the million dollar question, when the hell would that be built? Uh, so talk a little bit about that on when you think uh, that alternative would be built to be able to provide that relief, because that, as Senator Dodd said, is a major choke point. The environmental document will be released in draft form at the end of this year, then it will be finalized in the middle of next year. Pending funding for the project, the project would go to construction in 2024 and be open to the public in 2025. And price tag on that? The, yes. price, the, the estimate is between two, for, it's included in the larger project. So it is the, the entire um, projects together is a price tag between a quarter million, quarter billion and $400 million. Good times, uh, Senator Dodd. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Cameron. We're gonna turn it back over to Senator Dodd uh, to be able to go through our next question. Yeah, Joel Blackwell wanted to just to, us to provide an email summarizing what will happen on this meeting. He finds meetings too time consuming. They drive 37 a lot and he's really interested. So anybody that's out there uh, can pass this email. I think uh, website along www resilient37.org. So for any of your friends, you can pass that on. They can find out what happened on this meeting tonight. Uh, Chris Solberg, I believe this was really answered uh, already in the presentation, but for him, will Highway 37 be widened to four lanes from the racetrack to Vallejo? And will the Sonoma turnoff get a longer dedicated turn lane? The lane change has been a disaster for those living north of the racetrack. Uh, it impacts the traffic on Adobe Road South as well. I don't know if that's maybe Suzanne and Daryl or w w have at it. Suzanne, you want to take a crack at it? Um, sure. So, uh, you know, the the, the corridor improvements are uh, getting us to that four lanes in each direction with the improvements at the intersection at 121. Um, that is the interim approach. I mean, our, our whole theory has been people are hurting, right? People are hurting out there on the corridor, stuck in traffic. Even in the pandemic, the traffic is bad. And as we're coming out of the pandemic, it's getting worse and worse every day. Uh, Senator Dodd mentioned earlier the fact that housing costs in Sonoma and Marin are such that we we don't have adequate housing supply to meet the jobs that are in Sonoma and Marin, and therefore we have this commute in the corridor. Um, we have got to provide that interim project in order to get people some relief, whether it's by providing transit. We can't have transit if we don't add that additional lane, uh, or allowing carpools an advantage uh, and that's what we need to do with this interim project while we while we develop what that ultimate project will be that that's honestly the, the poster child for a resilience project in this in this corridor we are at such risk when it comes to sea level rise and when it comes to flood and storm events and without 
with without that foresight and and planning and working with all of our partners throughout the throughout the corridor, whether it's natural resource agencies or transportation or transit or rail, we need all those parts to come together. We've got to do a quick fix that's going to last, you know, for the next couple of decade or so, and then we're going to do the long term, and that's really what we're we're working towards uh, in partnership. You know, we talk about one team. That's what we really are, even though it's four counties to a regional agency, a statewide agency, our local elected officials, our state elected officials, our federal level, you know, we've got a federal transportation bill coming up. It's an exciting time and there's huge opportunity out there. So uh, yeah, I hope that answers the question, Senator. Maybe I can add on to what Suzanne said. I just talked to the new mayor of Vallejo. The number one issue for Vallejo and Sonoma County is people can't get to work and we're in Sonoma. Traffic's absolutely critical. All, all the ob objectives of the long-term product makes a lot of sense. We've got to solve the traffic problem. The flooding also occurs near Maryland on several occasions. So there's flooding up and down the corridor. So we've got to protect the resource. So get, getting essential people to work, getting people to essential trips are really critical for Sonoma County and Vallejo. Thanks to both of you, great answers. Uh, from Seth Hayes, um, and this is for Dina from Caltrans. Uh, will the new Highway 37 use barriers to block the headlights of oncoming traffic. I'm referring to the highway anti-glare blade screens that can be installed on the K rails that still allow emergency access between cross traffic, but block the view of headlights to oncoming traffic. And it's a good, good question. Uh, it all depends on the uh, final design of what that would look like. But generally speaking, our standards right now is a much higher barrier than it used to be in the past. So that has resolved this problem. We, we did recognize that this is a problem and it was uh, something that triggered a change in our standard uh, design plans. So that the barriers right now are, are normally much higher than they used to be in the past. And that addresses the glare issue that, that happens in opposing traffic. Thank you. One last question that I have from Catherine uh, Runyon. With so much of 37 going through wetlands, I'm assuming there are conservation concerns. Please share what's being learned and the environmental impact study and what organizations like Audubon and Sierra Club are saying about the project. Maybe Andy or anybody else? Yeah, thank you for that question. I actually think I'm gonna call my lifeline into Mr. Galvez, who is a Caltrans employee. I think he's probably the expert in this subject. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, good question. Uh, conservation and protection of environmental resources is really key uh, to all the partners. Uh, we are working very closely with all the agencies, uh, state and federal uh, regulatory agencies. We are uh, developing an overall plan. Uh, there was reference to the PEL study, the Planning and Environmental Linkage Studies, that is also a central part uh, of that strategy, making sure that we integrate environmental protection and enhancement with the transportation solutions that we all uh, desire on this corridor. If I could add to that, Senator, um, you know, we've been working really closely with organizations like Sonoma Land Trust and Marin Audubon, um, Ducks Unlimited. Uh, there are, there are a, a, a Point Blue, San Francisco Estuary Institute, uh, I could go on, uh, but it is it is a really important area, uh, part of the Bay that they care deeply about, as do we. And it's such an interesting um, opportunity for us to work together and develop corridor improvements that provide this great restoration and even public access opportunities as well. Um, so it's, uh, it's an exciting partnership. Honestly, it comes with like, different cultures sometimes, right? Like, you know, everybody thinks we're just talking about building a highway and that couldn't be further from the truth. So we're excited about working with all those environmental groups as well. Thank you. Senator McGuire. Thank you so much, Senator Dodd. All right, we have about 15 minutes left, ladies and gentlemen. So we're gonna ask you to be able to get those emails in with your questions, comments. We're gonna do a little bit of a lightning round. So we're gonna try to ask as many questions as possible here in the next 15 minutes and have our experts uh, keep their answers, if it's all right with them, to about 60 seconds, just so we can get through as many questions. So please give us your questions, your comments, your concerns, State Route 37 at dot.ca.gov. Again, email us right now, your questions, comments, concerns, all issues, we're talking Highway 37, State Route 37 at dot.ca.gov.
.ca.gov. All right. Uh, Senator Dodd, Supervisor Rabbit, Supervisor Arnold, we're getting a lot of questions in about funding. Uh, a lot of great vision. How y'all going to pay for it? So number one, uh, what I will share with you and Senator Dodd and I talk about this every week. When it comes to those interim solutions, whether it's on the Marin side to be able to secure the dollars that we needed uh, for the environmental impact report, which we did, uh, or when it comes to uh, the from Sears Point to Vallejo in that interim project, whether it's the barrier maneuver or the potential flyover or the roundabout there at the 12137 section, I assure you we are laser focused on securing dollars to be able to move these projects forward. But we also know big picture, we're gonna need federal support. All right, so Greg writes in tonight. Greg says, uh, is there optimism that President Biden's infrastructure bill will provide significant funding for a Highway 37 project uh, or is other funding already committed? So Greg, we have some initial funding committed for the environmental uh, review, which is good, but we're gonna need funding for the infrastructure to be able to build this interim approach that will last a decade or two. So I'm gonna go to Ann Richmond first from the Transportation Authority, Marin. And how important will it be to get federal funding into this project. And by the way, Congressman Thompson, Congressman Huffman, they have been all stars on this project, but we're gonna need the state to work with the federal government to be able to help secure these dollars. And I don't wanna put words in your mouth though, but I think that's absolutely critical. Ms. Richmond. Well, Senator, I couldn't agree with you more. I think on a project of this scale, you'll need to cobble together sources from the state, from federal government, from local entities, from regional entities, I mean, the kind of projects that we're talking about here, both the interim and the long-term projects, really are designed to be partnerships from the outset. And uh, we will definitely need that federal funding going forward. Thank you so much. That's Ann Richmond from the Transportation Authority, uh, Marin. Let's go to Kate Miller. Uh, Ms. Miller is the Executive Director of the Napa Valley Transportation Authority. Ms. Miller, uh, again, you see this all the time. Federal funding, federal partnership is gonna be absolutely necessary. The state is going to have to work closer and, than ever before with the federal government to be able to get the big picture of Highway 37 solved, right, Ms. Miller? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, all large projects are, um, you know, expanded partnership. And I'll just pile on to what Ann said. Without all of the sources on the table, this project is not going to get built. Even the interim project is beyond the magnitude of the four counties. We did a study just looking at the local highway funds that we got, and it would take, I, I, my recollection was 70 years uh, to pull that money together just from our local sources. So clearly we're gonna have to be creative. We're gonna have to look at things like uh, tolling um, to understand how we can uh, do the longer term project. Um, without that, there are things that we're never going to be able to deploy in the corridor where it makes sense, such as transit. We need that extra lane. We need to be able to create incentives, having an incentive for, uh, and, and we also need to address equity to ensure people can cross the corridor without having to pay tolls. That's where, again, where transit, bus transit comes in, where it makes sense um, to have it. And, and Ms. Miller, let's, let's talk about the issue of tolls. We're getting a few questions tonight. I'm going to go to Monica. Uh, and Ms. Miller, let's, let's explain why we're looking at the possibility of a toll road. So I'm going to say there's going to be a few uh, pots of funding. There will be some dollars that will come directly from the state to help build out. There will be some dollars that will come directly from the federal government. Uh, obviously, if the state supports the feds, which we need to make sure that we're working together on, uh, to be able to help build out. But long-term, Ms. Miller, to be able to get uh, continuous dollars, we're gonna need to look at a toll authority. So explain why that would be important. And I also know it's not a popular subject, but it's also the reality that we're facing. Ms. Miller. Well, you know, first, first off, uh, the federal and the state government fund projects when the locals are committed to it. So a toll would show that we are committed to making this corridor um, and keeping this corridor. Uh, without that, um, the, we risk the chance of the corridor actually being um, going underwater. Um, there is 
there is uh, it, it, the, the cost of the uh, ultimate project is so extreme that if we don't pull all of the resources that we can have together, including tolling, um, the likelihood of us losing this corridor is really great. And our concern about that is that most of the workers that uh, use the corridor are below the Bay Area medium, median income. And again, we have this equity question. If we're not supporting these workers getting to jobs and living in communities that are affordable to them, uh, I, I think we put the whole, our whole perspective, everything that we do uh, for a living to support our communities um, in question. That's Kate Miller, the executive director of the Napa Valley Transportation Authority. We're going to go to Suzanne Smith in just a moment. She's the executive director of the Sonoma County Transportation Authority. But let's go to Senator Dodd to have uh, another discussion on issue of tolls. Mr. Senator. Yeah, uh, Ms. Miller, I, I really appreciate your answer on the tolls. I think that was absolutely spot on. Some of you uh, may know, others may not. But I introduced a bill just before COVID-19 uh, you know, broke out. A, a tolling bill that would give uh, the region the authority to toll on this. I think for the reasons that uh, Ms. Miller gave, uh, that is something that we needed to do. Once COVID-19 hit and even this year with it, I really didn't want to, uh, you know, frankly talk about tolls or anything that would put hardship on any of our commuters at a time where everybody, so many people are facing hardships, but the reality is it is coming. But I want um, everyone to know and be crystal clear that Senator McGuire and I are very, very committed on Caltrans and our insistence that Caltrans step up to the plate on this job and the State Transportation Authority step up. This is the first sea level rise resilience program. Uh, it's a congestion management program. There are so many firsts to this type of uh, project that you've heard all night long. And I, for one, am not going to ask for tolls unless I see a huge commitment from the state of California going forward. You know, well said, Senator Dodd. Thank you so much. Uh, Senator Dodd, uh, grateful for your leadership on this. I'd like to go to the Executive Director of the Sonoma County Transportation Authority. Uh, and I think the other issue of this, Ms. Smith, is this is an issue of equity, right? We have a lot of um, employees that are coming into Marin and Sonoma that are working service-based jobs that are sitting in mind-numbing commutes. This should be a 25-minute to a half hour commute. Coming out of Solano into Marin Sonoma, it's 80 minutes. Going out of Marin Sonoma back into Solano, it's 100 minutes. Uh, it's ridiculous. But that's why we also need to focus on public transit. And then when we talk about tolls, it can't be one price for all. So let's talk about the equity measures that would be focusing on that, Ms. Smith. That's, a, that's exactly right, Senator. Um, there's something that we wonky people refer to as means-based tolling, but it's basically uh, like a sliding scale for, for tolls. And technology allows that these days with fast track. Um, it's, it's an opportunity to allow folks uh, a, a means-based toll, but also uh, means-based fares for transit. So providing uh, equity opportunities so that people who are need to make that commute have options, whether it's transit or driving in a carpool. Uh, and if they're driving in a carpool, they don't have to pay a toll potentially. If they are driving alone, unfortunately, they can pay a toll, but based on uh, that it's an income-based concept. Uh, so, I, you know, we really do need to address the realities of affordability and providing good options so people have choices to make. Suzanne Smith, Executive Director of the Sonoma County Transportation Authority. I'd like to be able to go to Ann Richmond and turn it back over to Senator Dodd. We have a few minutes left. Again, we look forward to hearing from you here tonight. Uh, send us your emails, your questions, your comments, concerns. Email it down, stateroute37 at dot.ca.gov. Stateroute37 at dot.ca.gov. Ms. Richmond, this one, this next question is coming in from Sandy, and we're also going to provide Supervisor Judy Arnold an opportunity to be able to chime in on this next question. Sandy asks, how will Atherton Avenue be affected during the various construction projects? So how will the Marin side of this project be impacted? Will we see some short-term pain for longer-term gain, especially when we get into the raising of uh, the highway in certain sections between 
101 and Black Point, and then Black Point to Sears Point. Ms. Richmond, and then Supervisor Arnold. Sure, thank you, Senator, and thanks for the question. Um, as uh, Ms. El Tawanze talked about a little earlier, you know, Caltrans typically has a process to notify the public when there is construction activity and to try to kind of minimize the, uh, the need for workarounds, minimize disruptions to the traveling public. So as the alternatives are developed for the Marin segment, um, we expect that there will be work to, again, try to minimize the disruptions while making sure that we can do the improvements that are necessary and making sure that the public knows what to expect during any construction. Thank you so much, Ms. Richmond. Supervisor Arnold, any items that you'd like to be able to add on to this? Marine County Supervisor Judy Arnold, and we're going to go back to Senator Dodd for additional questions. Supervisor Arnold. Oops, Supervisor Arnold, we're just going to be take yourself off mute. Um, we went the Marin and Atherton Avenue that's referenced here went through that in the in the in the floods that we had, and um, for several days it was pretty grim because people couldn't get out of their driveways because everybody was taking the Atherton uh, off. I think with the pro with the project we're talking about, we are going to have many public meetings. Uh, we're going to be talking to not just Caltrans, but we're going to be talking to our sheriffs, our police, our highway patrol. I think they will all come together uh, and we will make this work because it's, it's going to be such a godsend for everyone. And I think people are going to know that and, and be more patient. But I think we can, we can bring that together and uh, keep, it, keep it fairly, fairly well. Thank you so much. Marin County Supervisor Judy Arnold, very grateful. Let's turn it over to Senator Bill Dodd for some additional questions. Yeah, just in from Laura Ells, uh, when you improve Highway 37, will you also improve access and wildlife viewing areas for the public? We use Highway 37 to access East Bay, but we would also like to be able to enjoy the great wildlife viewing opportunities as well. I don't know, looking for maybe Kate Miller or Ann Richmond maybe to opine on that Go ahead, Anne. <laughs> okay thanks Kate <laughs> um, public access and improving kind of the accessibility of the natural habitat that is part of the sort of wonder of highway 37 is definitely a goal of the project and uh, we're looking at that not just in the marine segment but also through Sonoma and over to the East Bay side as well. And this is part of the work that's going on with some of the conservation organizations that were mentioned earlier, um, as well as just the, the project transportation partners. Um, this is kind of a unique and rare setting and a unique and rare opportunity to not just improve transportation, but to also look at improving natural habitats and people's access to wildlife and viewing areas. So absolutely that is uh, intended to be part of the project. Thanks, Ed. Senator McGuire. Thank you so much. I have a couple more questions here. Thank you so much, Senator Dodd. Thank you so much, Ms. Richmond. All right, so here we go. I um, want to talk about the current condition. We're going to go to Dina El Tawanzi, uh, who is District Director for Caltrans in the Bay Area. Mark writes in, what is being done to fix the potholes and sink areas that pose everyday problems on the corridor of Highway 37? So Dina, there are a lot, it's a lot of potholes, it's been built on mud. The roadway continues to sink into the marshland. How about that ongoing maintenance of Highway 37? Personally, the ongoing maintenance of Highway 37 is very, very important to us. And, and we do a lot of the, these maintenance projects, but also a lot of the weather uh, conditions and the climate conditions have been accelerating a lot of the pavement issues that we're seeing throughout the Bay Area. And Highway 7 is not an exception, of course. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of director's orders here and there to um, address some of these um, uh, quick fixes that Trans can do. Uh, our intent is to keep the roadway open and safe as much as possible and feasible. So that is our number one goal is, is exactly that. We'll continue to work on maintenance issues. And, and I would encourage everybody that's here on, on the call, if you do, uh, notice maintenance issues that is attention that has not been addressed. You know, please reach out to us. We've got the customer service request uh, system 
uh, that can easily uh, track these requests as they're coming in and it helps us also keep track of uh, uh, what uh, people are seeing out there and make sure that it's actually addressed in a timely fashion. Thank you so much, Gina Tawanzi, who's the district director for Caltrans in the Bay Area. Dave Capper writes in, Dave says a sea level rise is immediate and given Northern California is vulnerable to earthquakes, is the 37th key access for emergency vehicles congestion being taken into consideration? It's something that Senator Dodd mentioned early on. So we wanna go to Suzanne Smith on that issue. And then the other uh, very much related is coming in from Brian. Brian says, what can possibly be done to accelerate the process so we can see something substantial to begin in less than 10 years? I'll, I'll just say, and looking to Senator Dodd on this, look, I think you're gonna see some of these interim fixes related to number one, a potential flyover, a roundabout at Highway 37 and 121, much quicker than a decade. Uh, in fact, that uh, environmental report will be done next summer. Uh, as far as the movable barrier, that will be done much quicker than a decade uh, as well. The larger, longer term project, getting it out of the mark between Sears Point and Vallejo, that will be longer. But let's go to Suzanne Smith. Is it being taken into consideration about emergency access route, Ms. Smith? And then we'll go to Ms. El Tawanzi. Absolutely. No, it's a it's a great point. And, you know, it is a, a key route for evacuation purposes. And it's also a key route if there were an earthquake. So, you know, if something were to happen to the Richmond San Rafael Bridge, Highway 37 is the east west uh, connector. Uh, emergency services are, are reliant on 37 in, in many cases. And it, they're hampered by the fact that we only have that single lane and that bottleneck there. Uh, so, in, in, the ability for emergency services to respond to incidents and accidents are always helped by having more than one lane. The shoulder out there is not great right now, as I think we all know. Uh, so being able to, to even with the interim project, uh, ensure that, that uh, safety and, and uh, emergency vehicles are able to use that corridor is, is definitely at the forefront. Um, but I can't um, overstate how important that east-west connection is if we were to face uh, an emergency, whether it's a fire or an earthquake. You know, thank you, Suzanne Smith, the Sonoma County uh, Transportation Authority. Uh, last question for me, then I'm gonna turn it over to Senator Dodd uh, for any last questions. Then we'll go to Sen uh, Supervisor Rabbit and Supervisor Arnold for closing comments as well. Adina uh, El-Tawanzi, she is the District Director for Bay Area Caltrans. What can be done to be able to expedite those environmental reports, shave off some time working with uh, consultants to be able to do that, especially on that longer term fix, uh, Madam District Director, to try to get this done. Because as you know, and I know this is a major priority, by the way, for the District Director, it's just, it's a commuter's hell right now. Um, and wanting to be able to get a larger term, longer term project done as quickly as possible. Madam District Director. Thank you, Senator. A uh, great question, and, and definitely it is a focus of the project development team that, that we have in here. We've been working very closely with regulatory agencies to expedite the environmental review, and I think the key is communication and early engagement of all the different agencies that are involved in the permitting process. But also, one of the things that the department is focused on is, is what we described as the Pell study, and, and really the purpose of the Pell study is to expedite and to help advance some of these um, uh, early uh, environmental findings into the, um, the CEQA and the NEPA process. So we, we've already started this for the long-term project, but for the interim projects, also working closely with our uh, team members in the regulatory agency is key uh, in identifying needs early on and addressing them as fast as possible. Uh, so close coordination, lots of it, and, uh, and that's how we, we anticipate to get there. And also, you know, as the environmental process unfolds, you know, you'll be you, there's going to be the public commenting period, um, the scoping meetings. So your participation is much appreciated in those as well. Thank you so much, Gina El Tawanzi. She's a district director for Caltrans Bay Area. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to closing comments. Uh, as you heard tonight, uh, this is an all hands on deck effort. Four counties, one regional barrier transportation authority the entire team at Caltrans Bay Area, all working together on one big fix for Highway 37. Uh, we are committed to this project and we promise you, we promise you 
uh, that this is an all hands on deck effort to be able to fix this in the interim and then get the long-term fix funded both with state and federal funding. You have absolute commitment and I know we can speak for our congressman as well, Mike Thompson and Jared Huffman who've been champions. They're fighting for us in Washington, D.C. Uh, this is the first of many community meetings in the months and years to come. We look forward to your participation. And I just can't say thank you enough to Senator Bill Dodd, Supervisor David Rabbit, and Supervisor Judy Arnold for their 100% partnership, along with all of our transportation executives who are on here tonight for their advocacy and their fight for our region and Highway 37. I'm going to turn it over to Bill Dodd for closing comments, who will then introduce our supervisors for closing comments. Oops, Senator, you're on mute. Can't make this up, can you? <laughs> um, at any rate, I really want to thank you, Senator McGuire, for our partnership here. And, you know, there was only so many people we can get on a, uh, a presentation like this. It's also good to note that we have at least four, possibly five, assembly members that are partners with us on this uh, project as well, as well as the four counties, MTC, um, you know, Caltrans, and, uh, you know, the, li the list goes on and on. Environmental organizations, you've seen tonight from these presentations and these wonderful presenters, all the, the plans. And, you know, this is something that just wasn't made up, you know, overnight. This has been ongoing work. Frankly, I think this committee started when I left the Board of Supervisors uh, and went to the legislature in Marin, Napa, Sonoma, and Solano counties have all been working hard at, in their eight respective agencies, as has MTC. And what we've shown you here tonight is their work product, really, in, in many respects, in a lot of public meetings, and we'll continue to have those. The funding, as Senator McGuire said, is incredibly important. We have lots of options, but um, it's really incredibly important to all of us that uh, uh, this is something that's paid for by federal and state dollars. Um, uh, and, and, and we, we need to have that partnership, not only on the transportation side, but on the climate resiliency side. So with that, I just really appreciate uh, all the folks that uh, called in and emailed in questions um, to our panelists. And I will turn it over right now to Supervisor Judy Arnold from Marin County. Hey, thank you so much. And thank you, Senators and everyone who came tonight. Um, it, this is an exciting time. Um, you know, when I worked for John Burton, he put up the median because they'd had so many accidents there. But now we get to take a look at, with a totally different lens. I believe that many of the people in, in Novato, in my district, are very excited about getting a smart train over to uh, connect with I-80 and, um, and it's gonna take money. Um, and then I come back to when, when we received the jobs report from President, oh, by, from President Biden, it was like what happened when FDR spoke during, during the, uh, during, when, when we were coming out of that terrible depression, so many jobs so much money committed we it, it's it obviously is going to have to pass but i think there is something that we should really go after um because this is this is a perfect thing that this that this would happen so thank you everyone and you know where to find us if you have questions and i want to thank thank you so much senator mcguire you probably want to hurry to get home to little connor but uh, congratulations. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we absolutely love Supervisor Arnold. And uh, while we are upset that she has announced her retirement, we want to say congratulations. There's a lot more work in front of Supervisor Arnold. And she has been the rock of the North Bay. Uh, and Supervisor Arnold, thank you for your amazing years and your commitment uh, to the North Bay, in particular Marin County. And we know we got a lot of work in front of us, especially on Highway 37 in partnership. Supervisor Thank you. Arnold, we love you, and please Thank know that. Um, and she has been an absolute champion. And speaking of champions, uh, that's David Rapid. He's been a champion in Sonoma County for Highway 37. He is tenacious in fight for this highway. We want to say thank you, Supervisor Rabbit. We'll turn it over to you for closing comments. Uh, thank you very much. And first off, just I want to thank you, Senator McGuire uh, and Senator Dodd, for uh, holding this tonight. I think it was great information to get out. I too share. Uh, I will miss. Uh, I know we have some time, uh, Judy. 
Uh, but I, I very much appreciate serving with uh, Supervisor Arnold. We served together on the Golden Gate Bridge Board as well as the Highway 37 Policy Committee, which actually was started in 2015. And it started because we were frustrated with the time, lane, time frames that we were looking at, that we were all looking at, and we all thought we should step up and see if there's a solution. I really think this is a generational uh, project, obviously. It's our challenge and it's our problem to fix. And I'm glad that we've tackled it. And I'm glad that we've got to the point where we have, and uh, we just need to continue pushing hard. Uh, I can tell you, I think the policy committee is very impatient in many ways. We know that people every day are losing minutes of their life in traffic, uh, and we need to make sure that we keep addressing that, keep that in our focus. That's why there's been these different projects coming forward, things that were on the quick fix side of things, things that were gonna take a little longer, what can we do to make their, uh, their life better uh, each and every day going forward? So I, I very much appreciate that. Um, we would love to get one large check from the Biden administration for a billion or four, uh, but we know that's not how projects are really uh, get funded these days. And as been said earlier, it's about collaboration, cooperation, it's about working together. It's the federal level, it's the state level, and it's the local level. And I think what you see here is an example of that. And I think um, if we continue to work in that vein, we will be successful and we will get this project through uh, in a time frame that uh, is sensible. Uh, I think everyone gets frustrated with the length of time for uh, construction projects, um, but we can keep pushing. We can keep pushing and uh, make sure that we do everything possible to get uh, projects in the ground, alleviate the congestion for sure, uh, but also long term, like we like we talked about, uh, end up with a project that we can all be proud of. That future generations, when Connor gets his license in some years down the line, uh, and when he grows and has a family, that his children uh, could use this corridor and it could be safe, secure, and uh, and and above the water uh, going forward. So I look forward to continuing the uh, the work ahead of us. And I again thank you all uh, for having this tonight. Thank you for including me. Supervisor Rabbit, thank you so much for your advocacy. Uh, I'm already a worry wart, so uh, thanks so much for uh, adding that to when the kid starts driving. So uh, thank you, Supervisor Rabbit. I, again, this whole effort has been led by local government, has been led by Solano, Napa, Sonoma, and Marin counties. They have stepped up as a region to be able to prioritize the Highway 37 corridor. We need to say thank you because we would not be where we're at today without the leadership of those four counties, along with the Metropolitan Transportation Commission and uh, the Bay Area District of Caltrans. Uh, big thank you to Kate Miller, the Executive Director of the Napa Valley Transportation Authority, Daryl Halls, the Executive Director of the Solano Transportation Authority, Suzanne Smith, the Executive Director of the Sonoma County Transportation Authority, Ann Richmond, the Executive Director of the Mer Transportation Authority in Marin, of course, Andy Vermeer from the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, in our new uh, District 4 Director of Bay Area Caltrans, Dina El Tawanzi. Thank you so much for all of you for joining. Thank you for your questions and comments tonight. We promise you we're going to get the job done and we're going to do it together. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Much more work ahead. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.